Hi Movie, I'm Oliver Sim, the musician, writer and actor from Hideous, a three-part queer horror featuring music from my debut solo album, Hideous Bastard. Directed by one of my absolute favourite directors, Jan Gonzalez, Hideous is available to watch now, exclusively on Movie. My relationship with Jan Gonzalez started as nothing more than like a fanboy reaching out to his favourite filmmaker. Um, I got hold of his email address and this was at the beginning of lockdown. You know, I thought I was going to be thriving in isolation. Turns out that was not the case and I needed to speak to people that I was inspired by. So I got hold of Jan's email address and emailed him. Hi, Mr. Gonzalez. My name's Oliver. I'm a big fan. Um, and that's all our relationship was for like a year. I didn't approach him with a project in mind. I just wanted to get to know him. And for like a, a year, we were sending each other music and playlists and film recommendations. And I was sharing, I was sharing demos with him, like half finished songs. At this point, I was not even halfway through finishing my album. Um, and he was responding with like films and music and, and thoughts. Um, and it wasn't until a year in that we started talking about maybe we should work together. I love him like for 10 years. I didn't think it was possible to love him for so long. It's this love that's too much for me. I wanted to make a music film because I saw this record as a film in my head. Um, that's the film is probably what inspires me the most when writing. Um, and I knew I was making a record. I knew I was making music that was confessional. But I knew I didn't want to deliver it in a package that was overly earnest. It didn't need to be me performing in my bedroom for people to understand that what I was doing was like meaningful or confessional. I have always had a love affair with fantasy. And I think now more than ever, there was a need and there was a craving for fantasy. And also, if I think about some of my favourite musicians, they are what I would consider like world builders. They interact with much more than just music, whether that be art or fashion or film. And that's the thing that excites me the most. It's like, create a world that I can get lost in. When I spoke to Jan, when we were coming up with the idea, my almost like one request was, I want to be the monster. Make me the monster. I've made a record about fear and shame, not to punish myself or to beat myself up. My agenda in writing about fear and shame is to air it out so I don't feel so bogged down by it so it doesn't so feel so heavy or scary so I think the whole process of making this record though it sounds dark on a piece of paper fear and shame it's a celebratory thing and it's it's a thing that's helped me a lot and becoming the monster has made me realize I'm maybe not so monstrous or so ugly or hideous hey. Hey, come on. Oh, fucking freak. You look so weird. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Female rage is like a category that I put alongside monsters as the two categories of character in film 
that meant the most to me as a kid and continue to mean the most to me as an adult. They're very different, but it's like the female rage to me is, the, the examples I can think of are Sigourney Weaver in Alien, Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which were women that were feminine and beautiful and allowed themselves to be sexy, but were angry and strong and powerful. It was like all of the attributes that me as like a, a 10 or 12 year old little queer kid felt like I wanted to be, or maybe like I possessed, but couldn't show in the corridors at school. Um, and it's a part of myself that I, I kind of loved and I cherished, but didn't allow myself to be. So to see that in film was, was like an outlet for me. Jimmy Somerville, I think that's followed me around my whole life. Before I even knew who he was, I knew this angelic voice, um, whether that be on the radio or playing at home. Um, and then as I grew up, I became more and more aware of who he was and what he represented. Like, not only around HIV and AIDS, not even just for queer people, but for people that feel a bit other or feel a bit removed. He means something. He's, he's a beacon and an angel. I think he was taking care of me before I even met him, but having gotten to know him, you know, after a few months of speaking and being pen pals, I drove down to see him and I came to him with the song Hideous. Um, and I had just started writing it. I had put my HIV status in it. And I thought he was going to be really push me. I thought he was going to really push me to, to do it. I hadn't even decided if I was going to release it, but I was had decided I wanted to ask if he'd be a part of it. But he was so gentle with me, you know. He he said, you know, I hope you're not trying to be a martyr for a cause here, and I hope you're doing this for all yourself. Um, and it's funny, I had gone into that meeting thinking this man is fearless. He's done so many, he's been so outspoken, he's been so visible for so long. He must be fearless. And like, I've gotten to know him and he's full of fear, which makes everything he's done so much more meaningful and so much more inspiring because it hasn't been easy for him. Um, and he's been so generous with me. Not only was he a part of this song, but he, he sings backing vocals throughout the record and was very gracious um, and was willing to be a part of this film. Um, and like me, when I asked him and I said, you know, we want you to be this guardian angel figure. He was like, okay, so what's the, what's the theater to this? Like, what can I, what can I be? And that's what I had said to Jan of like, make me the monster. Um, and I think that's something I share with Jimmy of, is that, look at me, don't look at me. <laughs> Attitudes, he was like, what, what, what can I, what can I be? And, and so Jan and I went away and we thought, okay, glitter, let's, let's, let's push this to like high camp. Um, I came back to him and we were like, so we're thinking of covering, covering you with glitter. And he was like, right, I'm in, I'm in. I would love to do it. Be brave, have trust, just be The talk show format is so interesting to me. Like my reference point is different to Jan's. Mine would be Parkinson, um, where you're encouraged to sit down in an intimate environment and get vulnerable. Um, yet it's broadcast to thousands of people, so it's also performative at the same time. Wow, 
Wow. Well, um, talking about your fears, how long have you been dealing with them? I think they've always been here, but I had a happy childhood, loving family. Can I just say, your outfit is incredible. <laughs> I imagine you've always had this kind of taste. I mean, can you describe yourself as a child? I think my mum would describe it as I wasn't part of the football crowd. All that meant was I didn't play football with the other boys. Jan's thinking behind that was the whole idea of like wearing a mask and facade. And then what happens if I really expose myself and get vulnerable and show myself to be a monster? Will I be chased out of the set? Will it descend into chaos? I thought it was like a brilliant idea of Jan's. Within the film, I kind of have three different roles of a phantom, an artist, and a monster. And a monster is probably the character that I identify with the most. The artist is facade. It's, it's sometimes having been, a, like, being a musician and sitting down and doing interviews have sometimes been the hardest moments for me and the moments where I've noticed myself or caught myself trying to control how I'm being perceived, whether that be dropping my voice down two octaves or cutting any queerness out of my voice and trying to really trying to just present myself as the best best version of myself, which is natural and that it's part of the game. Um, but you know, the monster in the film reveals himself to be a monster, kills lots of people and does lots of angry things, but also allows himself to be vulnerable and embraced. Que guapo eres. Jan and I working together and I think like building a friendship before we even started working together, we realized we were very similar little boys. Uh, we had like similar outlooks on life as kids, similar experiences. Um, and a lot of that was feeling afraid, um, feeling quite conflicted and confused, um, but also being fans, being fans of music, being fans of film. I think making this film and making this music, it is very much like for my young gay boy self, um, becoming the monster I've always wanted to be. Even like the kiss, that happens on the set, that is something that I asked Yan for because I know so much of my childhood was like digging and searching for queer moments that I could find, sometimes even inventing them. But if I had seen that kiss as a kid, that is something that would have fed my imagination for like months and months. I haven't made this record as like a pity party, I don't want to perpetuate the idea of like a self-loathing gay man. I wanted there to be humor. I wanted there to be fun and adventure because that's how I see this music. That's how I see the world. That is my perspective. I very rarely walk around thinking things are happy or sad, dark or light, black or white. And that's what horror does for me. Radical honesty Might set me free if it makes me hideous